everyone, and welcome to Paranormal Roundtable. I'm your host, Josh Turner. They call me Wolf, and with me today, we have a special guest in the studio with us that's going to sit in with us, and we have Anthony, and we have... Mushu, the special guest. Oh, oh, you meant oh my not God, me? This dude. Well, I mean, he, to be oh, fair, dang. he is special. He's a certain type of special, but not the special that I we're talking about. He always wants to introduce himself. Special like education. Okay. <sighs> well, you know. Short bus guy. Anyways, we have Loki <laughs> here. Not you, but the Tony and... So anyway, yeah, Loki's in in the studio tonight. Everybody say hello. Hey, everybody. And we have a show tonight. And tonight we're going to talk about something. But first, let me get let me get started with the prelims real quickly. We're going to drop this link like we always do on our Facebook group. Go to Facebook and join the group Paranormal Roundtable. You might want a book. Uh, just leave a comment on on the YouTube link on the Paranormal Roundtable group. Go join. Uh, it's free to join. If you haven't already now if you send me a friend request i'm asking this for the thousandth time please let me know that you're a listener of the show so i can approve you okay because a lot of people send me friend requests and i can't i got like 90 of them in in the queue waiting to be but they're, they're not telling me whether they're you know friends of the show or not so that being said josh turner at prtpodcast.com that's how you get a hold of me and patreon uh, patreon.com th- slash PRT podcast patreon.com slash PRT podcast that is the coordinates to join if you join the $10 tier after three months you get a swag bag $20 tier you get a swag bag $30 tier you get what we call swag bag extreme and that ties into the um, conference if we're having a conference uh, the VIPs are for September 1st and then the 2nd and 3rd are for everybody else Uh, If you go to the conference Labor Day weekend and you buy a regular ticket, I give you $20 off. You buy a VIP ticket, I give you $25 off. I will reimburse you when you enter the building through either merchandise exchange or I will give you money, cash money. If you are a $30 tier member and you've been one for a month or longer. Um, and the longer you've been one, well, the more generous I'll be. Trust me. I didn't leave anyone out last year, everybody, 483 people and everybody left happy. Not one complaint. <clears throat> Nobody leaves empty handed. Come to the conference folks. T- tell them, tell them who all is going to be there. And then we'll get started with the stories. We got Ken Gerhard, Christopher Garitano, Barton Nunley, Lyle Blackburn, David Weatherly, Nick Redfern, Ron Moorhead, Ron Murphy, Anne Celine, Kenny Irish, Bettina Moss, Nick Valente, D.A. Roberts, Sibylla Irwin, Adam Davies, Jessica Jones, Dan Nadrello, David Spinks, and Chad Lewis. Yep, that's a heck of a lineup, folks. Um, I would go even if it was just a few of those guys. I mean, Nick Redfern, D- David Weatherly, Lyle Blackburn, uh, Ken Gerhardt. I mean, you got a, a, a spectacular lineup. Adam Davies, Ryan Moorhead weren't there last year. He was Sibylla. Neither was Jessica. They're, they're all going to be there this year, and it's going to be an amazing conference. Uh, I've seen Sibylla's presentation when I was in Jefferson along with Adam Davies, and I sought them out, and I said, you guys got to be at my conference. Ron Moorhead, he came on the show. I liked it. Chad Lewis has been a friend of mine for a long time. We were both mutuals of, of the late Linda Godfrey, um, and we were uh, close friends of hers. So, yeah, it's good to have him there. It'll be awesome to actually be able to talk to him in person. So that being said, we're going to get started here. We have a show. We got to get started, man. We got to get going here. We are talking about encounters with what we know to be the rake. Um, the rake, we already know it is a creepy pasta kind of yeah. made up name, but at the same time, like it, I don't think it discounts the creature in itself. No. I mean, people make the mistake of thinking that. The cryptid is based on the creepypasta, but it's the other way around. The creepypasta is based on the cryptid. Yeah, I would say that's accurate. Um, And so people say, oh, well, that name, the rake, and then they say it's not real because it's called the rake. We get stories about this creature regardless. Um, We had debated about how we were going to do this, whether we were going to do a show about odd humanoidal people, creatures, whatever, that walk among us as humans or reptilians. We had all these different classifications for it. So I'll start with one that will explain a little bit about why we were a little, well, we were a, a little bit in confusion about that. This one came to us, uh, from some, some people that were, and here's a weird thing. 
There's a rest stop right outside of El Paso in between there and Anthony, New Mexico. And Anthony, you and me have, have been to that rest stop with Nelly when we were driving to New Mexico um, or to California. Uh, and I told you guys that we had a couple stories out of that area and that particular rest stop. But this one is a new one I got not too long ago. This one happened during COVID. And so it was, you know, one of those things where nobody wanted to be touching each other or around each other or, you know what I mean? Like, like everybody had their masks on and everybody's like, don't get too close to people, you know? And these people were traveling and there were four of them. Four people, two guys and two girls. There were two couples, and they were coming, going through El Paso, heading into New Mexico. And they had been on the road for several hours, and they stopped at that particular rest stop. And when they, when when the person that was describing this to me, when he just started telling me where he was at, um, his name was David. I was like, I, oh, as a Dave, I'm stop you right there. I already know. What, <laughs> Something weird happened to you right there. Out, I said, dude, that place is so freaking weird. But I had no idea how weird. Okay. And it could get weirder. So what happened was they, they were all, they went in, they used the bathroom. They were all kind of sitting there talking, whatever. It was dusk. It was uh, in the late spring, kind of like it is now. And they were getting ready to get back in their vehicle or whatever. And there was one person that was kind of lagging behind and she was on her phone and blah, blah, blah. And they finally said, Hey, come on, let's go. Um, and they were the last ones to pull out of there. There were some other people that were there when they were there. And so when they were driving out, they were behind another vehicle, which makes this even more unusual. The other vehicle they think may have actually witnessed this too, but they're not hundred percent sure. And there was a guy that walked in front of the vehicle that was in front of them. Now they weren't, with a group or anything, those people were on their own. And when he, when they did, those people pulled out. When they pulled out, this person was on the left side of their vehicle and they noticed something weird that the person in the driver and the, the two people in the front of, of, of the vehicle in, in this four door sedan. <clears throat> and then the person in the back seat, uh, driver's side, the person in the back seat passenger didn't get a good look at him because of the angle. But they noticed that this person, what they thought was a person, was blurry. And when they walked, there was almost like this blurriness. And the way that he described it to me is like, and I've heard this before, and you guys have too. It's like somebody, like when there's a fire, you know, or smoke in a distance, you know, you see like a, like a, and there's like this blurriness around it. Like mm -hmm. a mirage. Yeah. Like a mirage, like heat. <clears throat> yeah. And, and and in particular, he said they said that it was like a fire, like when you see the outsides of a fire, like if something's really hot. And they said that this person was moving, they could see almost like a the, the heat signatures of white on the person. Like if you were looking at something that was white hot. And they thought it was odd. And they were like, oh, look at that dude. What is that? And then they all kind of stopped and they looked and the thing turned its head and looked right at them. And what they saw were black almond-shaped eyes. No mouth was visible, nothing. It was just white and pale, and it had it was like it had walked out of some sort of vapor. But they could have swore, all of them said the same thing, that when it was walking in front of the car that was in front of them, that it looked like a man, but that it slowly began to look like something else once that other car had driven out, you know, when it got in front of their cars, when it started to morph. So they wondered if the person driving the car in front of them, when they, the way they peeled out real fast, had, had seen something. Uh, but they, but they, I guess we'll never know. And they said that when they, when this thing got to the left side of their car, I say thing because it was walking like a man, but it slowly began to morph into a person that was wearing a red bandana and carrying a backpack. Wearing uh, beige shorts and like a green or blue, they said that there was a debate about what color the top was, and they had he had a beard, and they were like, "Did this thing just become a person? Like, what was that? Like, what what was that that they just saw?" And the person looked back at them and just kind of nodded their head, like, "What's up?" And then just kept walking. And then they were all like, ooh, ooh, what was that? So they all just like burned out real fast and started driving off. And, you know, the driver, he told me, he said, dude, I nearly wrecked. I, th I th almost ran off the road. 
And he asked me what I thought it was, and I said, the devil. No, I don't know. I didn't. I was like, I said, dude, I don't know. How long has it been since your last confession? He's like, a long time. I go, well, there you go. No, I didn't say that. But that's a crazy story. Like when when he told me that, now before you say, oh, that's, you know, so weird or whatever, that's out of the realm of possibility, whatever, consider this. One time, and now we've had a weird story of a person walking around Barton Creek, and we've told this one. Barton Creek Mall, where my friend Brian from years ago saw what he thought was somebody morphing into something else when he was walking. You can go back to the archives and find that. It's either on one of the lives or one of the hundreds of shows we've done. Um, I can't remember which one that was, but I remember him talking about that story. Was that that on one of the podcast episodes? I think it was. If I remember right, it was on one of the hour-long yeah, so so get this. There is there was a movie theater that was next door to the Barton Creek uh, Mall. Loki, I don't know if you remember that that movie theater. Yeah, Barton yeah. Barton Creek Theater, or yeah. whatever it was. So you remember that Barton Creek Movie Theater right right there? Now it's like in the mall. Yeah, it's like an AMC now. Yeah, or whatever. And me and Scorpion, well, what weird thing happened to us there one time? Just real quick, he almost got shot by a co- off duty cop there because they thought that we had stole something from somebody's car. And all it was was like Jack in the Box. <laughs> it was the antenna ball. Antenna balls. Antenna balls. And, and in our defense, somebody had taken one off of my vehicle, and Scorp went and it was <laughs> the guy took it. You could see because mine was missing an eye. So Scorp goes and takes it and puts it back on the car. And then we're the guy says, "Hey, he's like a security guard. He's like, I'm also a police officer. He shows his badge. This was like 20 years ago, you know. And he's pulling out his gun, and Scorpion's going." Uh, uh, this is ours. This is ours. He's like, put your hands where I can see him. The scorpion just keeps talking. Finally, I yelled and I said, this guy's serious. Okay. He doesn't know that you just took an antenna ball back. He thinks that you just did something bad. I said, put your hands where he can see them. And he's like, listen to your friend. This guy had his gun out nine millimeter. And I believe he was a, uh, off duty cop from either Westlake or APD. And, uh, Oh, no, no, he was counting. He was a counter. Some of those antenna balls are hard to find. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> those are rare. worth getting shot over. So anyway, that, that's how I remember that theater always was that. And then our friend that was with us, who's now deceased, my friend Roger, and he was just, we were yelling at him, dude, put your hands up, dude. This guy has a gun out. And then that, that guy, we cleared it up and we said, look, they stole that from us, that vehicle over there. And he goes, okay. And then he let us go. No harm, no foul. But for a minute there, it was touch and go. Anyway, that theater, when it when it went under, when it went down, and they decided to move it into the mall itself proper, uh, I forgot the name of that road right there. It's right there next to Westlake. But that theater was dilapidated for a while. I don't know what that road is. Lake Line Boulevard? But, no, Lake Line is up north, up, up here. Oh, you're talking about Barton Creek? Yeah, mall. Barton Creek. It's it's called something. I don't know. What, but it, there's, a, there's a road right there. I've had a couple f- things happen. It's right there by 360 but, and, or whatever yeah. where the – Flamingos mm-hmm. where it used to be or whatever. Yes, that. yes. Right there. Yeah. That, there's been a couple weird things that have happened there. I, I got accused of littering one time and almost got into a fight there right at that. I don't know what's going on with that spot. But anyway, long story short, there was a theater that was there and it was dilapidated. And for a while we did security there. And Scorpion did security there. Well, when he relieved a guy one time, this guy's name was uh, Andy, or I think, or something like that. Andy, Andrew. He claims that one night when he was working there, that he saw what looked like, and now this kind of goes along with the whole camouflage thing, people saying that they see, um, what what was that episode called? The Shimmering Phantom or something like yeah. that? We called it that because we didn't want to call it the Glimmer Man because there's a movie, you know. But it, it was something along those lines, and he said that it looked like it was uh, moving, like, but it was on... Not on all fours, but like a like the shape of a human hunched over, and it was actually pursuing what looked like a raccoon, and it was moving fast, and this raccoon was trying hard to get away from it, but it caught the raccoon, and this guy said that this thing immediately upon catching this raccoon, it it well, I guess for lack of a better term, it morphed, and he told me and Scorpion that it morphed into what looked like a pale humanoidal figure. Um, got in touch with this guy. I found him. It's been years and years since I'd worked, since I'd uh, talked to this guy. And I found him through another guard that I, that I ran into on Facebook, a friend of mine named Tony. 
and I started talking to him and I said, dude, do, do, you, do you know this guy? Have you, cause they used to work together and he says, yeah, I, I, I know him. He still does security. I got in touch with him. Uh, I think he lives out in Lakeway, but he, he swears up and down. And I reaffirmed it with him after all these years. That was like, you know, 15 years ago that he watched one of these pale humanoidal rake looking creatures just l- immediately devour a raccoon right in front of him. And I said that night, I said, did, did, and you, t- you told the, scor- the story to Scorpion when we went to get our checks, we were working for a different company at that time. And, uh, we went in there and I was only working part time. I was doing that to keep my guard card active or whatever. I was working at a nightclub and Gary, uh, Scorpion, he was working full time and, the guy asked him if he'd seen anything weird there. And he, he asked him that. I, I wasn't in, the, in there with him. I was in there talking to the bosses. And uh, I remember that guy saying, man, I saw something really weird. And then Scorpion told me that story. And then we lost touch with him because back then we didn't have, I don't even think we had MySpace. I don't even know if we had MySpace back then. We, barely, have had, face, we yeah. barely had pagers. Yeah. Yeah, we we had like cell phones, but it was yeah, it was probably still pager time, you know. <laughs> um, yeah, probably. I think it was like two thousand or something like that. But this guy, he 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 claimed that he saw this, and like I said, I just talked to him a few months ago, and he's still around. He's he's like me; he's older now, but he still does security part time. And uh, anyway, he, he's a pretty trustworthy guy. And I asked him about that story, and he had a couple weird stories, but that one goes along with what we're talking about. And he said that this thing literally grabbed this raccoon and just like ate it head first. I mean, it was gruesome. When I asked him to describe, I said, Andy, can you tell me what this thing looked like? And what he told me, um, I'm sorry, I think his name was Adam. I'm sorry, not not Andy, Adam. I said, can you tell me what this thing looked like? He said it had pinkish looking eyes, almond-shaped, um, the teeth, he said they were needle-like and it kind of, they, the bottom jaw looked like it protruded. And when it was biting, it was moving its jaw back and forth, like, like kind of like a, how a horse chews. You ever seen how a horse kind of grinds back like and forth? Like sideways, yeah. Sideways, yeah. And he said it was the weirdest thing and it looked right over at him and it just sat there with these weird looking hands and it was just eating it. And he said it ate it in like three or four bites. And he said you could see it like going into its stomach like and it was like undulating like it was weird. He said and then it just kind of crawled off into the bush. And he said, dude, that was it for me. He goes, I never worked there again. And when he goes, when Scorpio asked me uh, why I quit working there, I told him. I was like, there's a, there's some something out there, you know. Um, after that, with Scorpio not having a vehicle and just sitting out there in a chair <laughs> – uh, we, we decided to pull him and put him over at another place called Axion and got him out of there. Um, that I remember because that, that was like the end Scorpion said he had felt something weird out there, like a weird energy. And he had claimed that he thought he saw the bushes moving and stuff, which freaked him out. But when that story, when he told that story to him, and I thought when he told me that story, I thought maybe he's just trying to get out of work in there because he don't want to work there because there was no you know, internet or nothing. There's nothing, you know, maybe he's just trying to get out of where you don't want to work. You don't like it. I think it. I remember that one had that view that when you're right there, that movie theater was on the outside of the parking lot. Mm-hmm. And then it had that view that over all of Austin. Yeah. Right if, you, if, you, if you went up the hill. I remember we used to hang out yeah, there. And when if you, either one of y'all were working or somebody mm-hmm. would go up there and hang out in the middle of the night. Yeah. And we knew the guards from the, from the, yeah. from the, yeah. And from the next door and they would come out there and, and, and be as a courtesy, they'd come out there and they'd check on us too. Now I, I subsequently I interviewed Mac who I've known for years. Cause I remember I'd gotten into a, an altercation there at the food court and he helped me out. And Mac used to work with us years ago as a, a African-American guy. And he told me, he goes, dude, there's some weird stuff that lurks around that area, dude. Didn't elaborate. And we didn't really have time because I was, I was in the, I was in the middle of, of shopping and I, and we just were talking one day and he goes, dude, there's a lot of weird stuff. You should come back and talk to him one day. We didn't work there anymore. Now he's the head of security at, uh, out at, uh, uh, not the Galleria. I forgot the one in San Antonio. Anyway, he's the head of security at a mall in San Antonio. So we were sitting there talking and, and, and he told me, he's like, there's a lot of weird stuff out there. My guards have claimed that they've seen stuff in the woods, you know, adjacent to that theater. And then I think shortly after that, another company took over that contract because Scorpion quit working there and Adam or Andy or whatever his name is, Adam, he quit working there. 
So that was it. We didn't have anybody to do it. And I remember that just, we were working for another company. And uh, I just remember that being like one of the reasons. Now that story, I, I wasn't real sure about that story because all I had to go on was Scorpion's retelling of it and no offense to him, but he, you know, I, I didn't totally, uh, wasn't totally buying into his whole reasoning for not wanting to be there. And I just thought maybe he didn't like the hours or whatever, but actually getting in touch with this guy when I was doing this story, it made sense when I heard the story, um, about the one out near Anthony, New Mexico in between El Paso and Anthony, I thought this makes sense because I've heard this before. And so I pursued this story and that's what I got out of it. Now he did say that it had arms and legs just like a normal person would, but of course they looked bizarre and it was, it was spindly in his words, his own words were spindly. And, uh, and then that's the end of that story. And, and, you know, when he said that he was doing patrol and he claims to have had a Sasquatch encounter going out near the Galleria out there near, uh, um, B, uh, B caves. But that's for another, that's for another show. But th- here, here's another one. And what do you think of that one? Before we move forward, I mean, and well, then I'll give you another one. <clears throat> what's funny is there's a show that Scorpion likes to watch called Grimm. And the premise of that show is that these specific humans have special eyes and that all these cryptids, they are basically just humans, but they have like this mist or like this veil that covers up their true form, which are these like really monstrous looking uh, creatures. Yeah, I've heard of the show. I hate it. Yeah, I don't, I'm not a big fan of it either. But it's really funny when you, was like, I'm not when you look at all that, it's like, that's what I would imagine is like, it's like this veil that kind of just starts disappearing and you start seeing them like their, their features pop up and like to see that would just freak me. I, I, that would just freak me out. So did I you watch that show? I watched a couple episodes and I couldn't get really into it. Yeah. It didn't really make that much sense to My me. My wife, I think watched it. Uh, I, I, I know Yvonne. Grimm, that's the one that's like Grimm's fairy tales, right? That show. Yeah, that's what it's yeah. about, that, basically. It's, they try to steal all the stories. And yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because our, our vitamin I shop I think that one started she, out strong. She's the one and, that liked it, too. Like she it, said that. Before the first season was done, it was terrible. Or I don't know. I just... Well, yeah, because uh, I remember the other day, Nelly was... Uh, not the other day, but it's been a while, but Nelly and Scorpion and Yvonne were all talking about it. Yvonne's the lady. I'll give her a plug. She's got TFN, uh, Total Fitness Nutrition, former Olympic medalist, and she's got a great... If, if, you're in Austin, you need anything herbal wise, anything supplements, she's the person to go to. Yeah. But she was talking about that show. Yeah, so Scorpion, you could see why I wouldn't really believe when I didn't know about that show at that time, but I just Yeah, that's why I was like I kinda <laughs> wondered, I was just like, dude, maybe you just don't want to be out there. And so, you know, maybe but he wasn't he's not scared. He, other than the Church of the Forgotten story, like he's never ran away. He doesn't you know? seem like the type to if he was going to sh- uh, take off work, it's because of his laziness, not of his fear. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, he's not going to run away from a place because he saw something creepy. <laughs> yeah, he would be yeah like, you're oh, right. I don't want to work The only there time I've ever sucks. seen him be afraid and, and he any, can't sleep on the job. Yeah. <laughs> is if he's over there at, uh, at the Church of the Forgotten. He was terrified of that place, but I've never That's, seen him. And we're talking about right over by where, like, uh, where the uh, green belt is, right? Where mm-hmm. you go park right there and go down. To the river and everything, mm-hmm. and then across the road is the mall. Yeah, right there. Yeah, there's a lot of weird stuff that happened. I've heard. There. I've heard a friend of mine, Joe, was homeless there for a while, and he told me some weird stuff. That's out where there. they're at, right there by the water. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Cal, uh, another guy. He 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 stayed out there for a little while, and he said he saw some weird stuff. I I can't remember everything that they were telling me back then. We had so much stuff going on. I tried to collect it. And you know, I wrote in my journals, mm-hmm. and my ex burned them. You remember mm-hmm. you know, her stupid self, but she burned a bunch of my stories. And anyways, that's what sucks. Letting your ex have a key to your place and a fireplace there to burn stuff. So whatever, you know, <laughs> it is what it is. I lost a lot of information, but I had collected a bunch of stories and some of them were from that place. And anyways, this story here, you know, I was going over this story with my wife and this one was, was really weird. We got this one from a hunter who was out uh, dove hunting at his brother's place and near Burnet or near Marble Falls. And he was driving on the highway between Marble Falls and Burnet. And I hate to sit here and tell you this. I don't have it written down the name of the highway. Look up Marble 21 Falls. Har- highway 21. Okay. Well, there you go. Logie knows highway 21, uh, Marble Falls to Burnet. 
And he was halfway there, and it was late at night. It was about 2 in the morning, and like I said, he had left his brother's place, and they were out hunting out, you know, out in the woods or whatever. And he said, dude, I see the weirdest thing ever. He's like, I look over to the side and I see deer. There's all kind. There's always deer on that highway. They are, they will, and it's like they're it's like they're committed to committing suicide. Like they want to jump out in front of your vehicle. And I kid you not, man, I've had some close calls and, and, and on that road in particular. And one of them, he said, it, he thought, oh, here we go. One of them's about to jump in front of my vehicle, and he sees the deer move. But when it does, it something really odd happens. It flips. And it kind of does like a somersault and then it lands on its back legs and it looks like it's startled. Then he sees these two pale looking hands come up out, out of the ground. He thought it was coming from out of the ground, but I'll tell you what happened. It grabbed the back legs of the deer and yanked it toward it and it sat up. And he said, when it did, he sees what looks like the hind legs are in the position like a frog, like sticking up, like, you know, out in an angle and this thing is pulling this deer and he's driving by and he's looking and he's like, what in the heck am I witnessing? And he said he shined his brights on it because it was uh, in the, in the, in the middle of the road, like halfway in the road, halfway out of the road. And when it, when it, when the lights hit it, he said it immediately let go of the deer and then it turned into, and he says, I know this sounds crazy, but it turned into like what looked like a ball and then sped across the road real fast and then popped up on the other side and he saw its head, like he saw what would look like the backside, built kind of like a man standing straight up about seven foot tall. And what was the head swiveled around and, and made contact with him. And he looked at it. He said the eyes were black. And he just kept going at that point. This whole area is very strange. It's a very weird area because I got stories of Bigfoot, Dogman, and the rake type creatures right outside of Bertram in an area near Joppa. There was like a little church there, and I, it was part of my dad's mom's ancestral home in that area. And there was a story uh, that one of our friends, a uh, guy named Rocky, had actually, and look, you know who he is, mm -hmm. but he had actually told us a story of seeing uh, one of these rake-type creatures in, out there, you know, and his brother had gone out there and seen like, I think, I, if I'm remembering correctly, there were like three dogmen. And then, or maybe it was vice versa. He saw the three dogs. His brother saw the rake type creature. But anyway, that was near this area. So there, it's a very weird place, you know, that area. Yeah. Like, uh, on 21 right there going, we used to have a, we used to live in Bertram right there mm -hmm. and we would travel that all the time. We'd come from, uh, in Austin to Bertram all the time to go feed the horses and stuff. And, uh, we were going on, I was really young. I had to been like five or six and uh we're going down 21 towards uh marble falls just going past bertram and uh it was a summer day and uh the it's not a rake story but it's it's definitely something has happening over there because we were there it's a hot summer day in in texas about 100 degrees and we're driving and then it starts to rain and then hail and then snow and then it like it clears up and then it's hot again instantly. And this is like within three minutes on this road. And I remember my mom instantly going to the next convenience store and just pulling over and like going in and speaking to the people in there and tell them. And I, you know, I didn't think anything of it when I was little, but my mom having told that story to like five people all manically and, you know, trying to explain it and to try to make sense of it, I guess. Of why, you know, that area is weird. It's it like, is weird. It's like really strange out there. <clears throat> and you get, I, I got one also, I think it was like west of Marble Falls, whatever, whatever that, there's another highway that goes outside of Marble Falls going west. And uh, you can look on a map real quick, Tony, one of y'all, whatever that, that, that town is. There's another town right there on the other side of going outside of Marble Falls. And I remember uh, my friend, you know, our friend Squid used to live out there in Marble Falls. And I remember going out there. Uh, a couple times and just being like told that people had seen, like there was a flap at one time. I think it was like back in the nineties, people seeing like a UFO, a different type of like weird disc shaped UFO that had like some sort of weird lights around the outside of it. That was like spinning within, within the UFO it was one of these, but it was the same description I had gotten like three, like three or four different times. 
And I think it was back when Squid was living out there. And I just remember like their neighbor, him and his uh, ex-wife's neighbor, like saying something to them about seeing a UFO. And I remember hearing a story. And um, so I don't know. I don't know if that's connected to it or, or what that is. And then I had another one. I, I believe that somebody had seen one. And I think I've told this one on the show before already. So I'm not going to get into it. But somebody had seen one like floating on the on a water and like just coming out like it looked like a plastic bag. Yeah, yeah, yeah like sorry, a, I yeah, that one. yeah, like a tri- like a giant tra- trash bag. And then it just floated to the shore and then kind of walked out. And that might have been on on the on the river right there at Marble Falls. And there's a lot of rivers and stuff out there. There's like Inks Lake. There's mm-hmm. Marble Falls. There's what else is out there? There's a bunch of different weird bunch of stuff, stuff. Weird stuff that's out there. It's like that's where all the water is and the whole desert of Texas. It mm. feels like. Well, there's no desert here out there. It's like it's like that's the green part. Well, yeah, when you start to get further west, what what goes? What's west of Marble Falls? Uh, Horseshoe Bay, Johnson Horseshoe City. Horseshoe Bay, Johnson City. There yeah, you go. Stonewall. Yeah. And, and then if you go further out and you keep going, you go up to Junction. Now, once you get about, you know, 50 miles from Junction, then you start to hit like a deserty type area, I believe. But you can probably look that up on a map. But that, that whole area, dude, is just weird. A lot of weird stories. You get a lot of weird encounters with different types of creatures. I don't know what you want to call them. I got the caverns are over there. Yeah. Yeah, and, and and I've gotten some crazy uh, ghost stories out of there too. Somebody once told me a story uh, right out uh, right outside of Johnson City where they were driving along and they see these red eyes coming across the pasture, and then what when it got closer, and it's not a rake, but it, it's it's weird. It was in that area, and it went right through the fence, and it looked like a cowboy sitting on a horse, and the horse the horse had red eyes. And it just rode really fast, like right across the road, right in front of their vehicle. And they were just, they had slowed down to going about 15, 20 miles an hour because this, they could just tell it wasn't going to stop. And it ran right in front of their vehicle. And they were like, it just looked like a cowboy on a, on a black horse with red eyes. And it, and it literally, it was ethereal because it went right through uh, the uh, barbed wire. Uh, and I got that story from a guy named Bobby who uh, used to live in my hometown. But uh, he's like, yeah, I was driving out there one day to go visit this girl that I was dating. And he goes, and me and my friend, you know, we see this horse, you know, and, and I'm not going to lie. He said that they had imbibed a little bit, you know, and, and whatever. But he said, I wasn't, I wasn't smashed. I wasn't drunk. I wasn't, you know, um, but he said, yeah, I had, a, I did have a couple earlier, but he goes, I wasn't like, you know, throw it off to where I, I didn't know what I was seeing. Um, and that would have been probably from where this guy saw the rake, um, not even probably 10 miles. So I, I don't know. It's, it's a weird area, weird place. <clears throat> People I get dog man reports out of there on that road from Lago Vista to, to Marble Falls. There was a story we did not too long ago about a Bigfoot creature throwing a rock and hitting somebody's windshield and shattering it. And it was down in a Creek bed over there near Turkey. Is it Turkey bend or Turkey Creek? I forgot the name of it, but it's right there. There's like a a little area, like a little spot that's kind of like the, the creek bulges out into like a lake, and it's a pretty popular spot, and you can go out there and go camping, go fishing, whatever. Um, I know one night, I, one day, me and Zane and Nellie were out there in that area, and some, some girls, it had rained, and some girls' vehicle had gone down into a ditch. And we had helped them get out of their car, and I don't I don't remember their names. It's been a while, but one of them ran like a, a hair salon or something out in bee caves. But they were stuck in their vehicle, and their vehicle looked like it was about to go further down this little ravine and, and flip over. So we were able to help them and get them to safety. Um, but yeah, that uh, that that whole area is just weird. And there was a weird guy with a big old scar on his face. He kept trying to get those girls to come to his camp. He's like, I'll help you. Come on, y'all come over here. I'll let you use my phone. And they're like, no, we're good. We have our phones. And I, I finally just told the guy to piss off because it was just like he just kept on, you know. But anyway, back to these rake stories. Here's another one. And when you when you look at these stories individually, you're thinking, oh, that's just weird, you know, whatever. But then you start to look at them taken as a whole. Now, on Fridays, if you're not listening, if you're not tuning in to the Friday night live streams, you're really missing out because we talked, we started this episode like we do all of them just about now 
on Friday night, and we talked about a security guard in San Diego who had seen one of these creatures in a very bad complex in, in a laundromat. And <clears throat> before you think, oh, that's weird, you know, it's it's in, a, in, a, in an area where there's people, it's heavily populated, whatever. Here's one in Wisconsin. This guy was right outside of Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and he was sitting at a rest stop. And th- this happened, I believe he said this happened back in the late 90s. He was sitting in his car and he had pulled over to eat some fast food that he had gotten, like a cheeseburger or whatever. He said, I'm almost done with my food. And he said, no, no sooner did I, uh, you know, did the indigestion set in, <laughs> I see this. Now there again, it's, it's really weird. He saw what he thought was something moving on, on all fours to the right of his vehicle. And he said that as it got toward the front of his vehicle, he saw the back end of it and he thought, is this a man I'm looking at or a white hairless dog? He couldn't tell what it was. And then when he turned and it looked back, when it turned and looked back at him, he said he noticed that it had a head that was humanoidal in shape. And he thought, oh my gosh, this isn't a dog. This is some sort of white, pale creature looking thing crawling around on all fours. And so he turned his headlights on and he started his vehicle. And when he did, it went, it, it immediately got up on, on two legs and took two long steps in its legs. He said, I could have swore the legs were elongated. Like they were elongating as it walked, like it, like they were, you know, growing longer. And then it got to his other side of his vehicle and it went right over to his vehicle and it looked right in at him, in his vehicle. And he's staring at this thing. I said, what did it look like? He said, the eyes were black initially, but then when it would blink, they would turn like a pinkish color and then go black again. And he said, I looked right at it. I didn't see a nose. He said, but I did see what looked like really nasty mouth full of teeth and he said that it like slapped his vehicle with its hand and then it ducked down as he started the vehicle, like it got startled. And then he took off driving and he goes, dude, I, I looked in the rearview mirror and I thought I'd left it behind. He said, I'm maybe not even half a mile down the road and I'm driving, I'm getting up speed as fast as I can. He said, and then this thing just pops up alongside my vehicle. He's like, I don't know where it came from. I didn't see it in the mirror. And he just sees like a, it slapped the window again of his driver's side. And he's like, I'm sitting there looking at this thing and it's eye to eye with me. He's like, and I'm gunning it. I'm going as fast as I can. And eventually it just like stopped. And he goes, and I, and I see it in my rear view mirror and I see it just veer off and go off into the, into the, the distance, you know, into the, into the bushes. And he's like, dude, I just kept going. I was like, I, I was just, you know, he goes, dude, I drove clear across Wisconsin. He was like, I was done after that. He goes, I don't know what that was. He's like, I goes, I'll never forget as long as I live. It was just like a, a pale humanoidal crawler. And and I asked him, you know, this question, uh, you know, I'll call him Danny. And I, I said, Danny, did you, what did it, you know, what, did you get a feeling of evil? Same thing I asked the guy from Marble Falls, uh, Burnett Encounter. That guy said he didn't feel anything from it. He just, until it stood up and turned and looked at him and he, then it scared the crap out of him. But he didn't say he felt like an overall overwhelming sense of evil or dread. He just, he goes, and I might have just been really tired, you know. Well, this guy said he did. He said he felt something just really evil coming off of this thing. And he said it was not a normal creature by any stretch of the imagination. He goes, there's no way you can say that this is any sort of like, zoological animal. He goes, it's not even a cryptozoological animal. He's like, it, it, it was not, you know, he goes, there was nothing natural about it at all. And I said, what do you think it was? He said, an alien or a demon or both. That's what, that's what he said. And, um, here's another one. And along the same vein of that one, <clears throat> this one was on, I believe interstate 45. This happened on interstate 45. This person was dr- she was driving alone in, 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 at night, and she was going from Houston to Dallas, and she was only outside, or I think she was going from Galveston to Dallas, actually, but she was right outside of Houston, and it was night, and it was like, you know, a good uh, 15 miles outside the city, and she said that she sees this thing, what looks like chasing a deer across the road, when she got like where she thought she was going to hit it, she was trying to slow down. It didn't move. It just stayed there right there in front of her vehicle. And here's the weird thing. When she went through it, she said, I, I'm not joking. She's like, it looked like I hit, like I felt 
my body, my body kind of like, like, you know, the impact, I felt the impact. The, the vehicle jerked a little bit. She goes, but it was like I hit gelatin. And she said that after that too, there was even like what looks like, it looked like gobs of gelatin like substance on her windshield, no blood, nothing like that. And she said this thing had made no effort to move or anything. And then she looked off to the side of the road and she sees this thing moving off, crawling on all fours, like a spider, the way she described it, going off the road into the bushes. And she said that, that like, she knows she hit it. She's like, there's no way I missed it. It, it. it had to have. I hit it, and there was this, like, jelly-type substance, you know, that she said was on her windshield and on the hood of her vehicle. The description of this vehicle or the description of this creature was very much like the, the, the description of the creature between Burnett and, uh, and, and Marble Falls. Same thing. It was, it was like a pale humanoidal crawler creature, a rake. It was very skinny. She said you could see its rib cage and like the deer had gotten away from it. And all it was doing was just, she's like, it was almost like it became the deer in the headlights. It was just staring at her headlights. And she said that the, the, the eyes were black. They just looked like slits, black slits. There was no nose that she could see. Um, she said that there was, she couldn't, she didn't see any teeth or anything like that. It looked like its mouth was closed, but it was staring at her and it just looked like a pale, naked, humanoidal figure. She didn't see any genitalia, which I haven't heard anybody say that on, on any of these stories, but it just looked like, and, and then she even went a step further though. She said that it was weird as she got closer, it looked almost like there, there, there was like a membranous suit that was encompassing the white body and this body, it makes me wonder what the body is encompassing because there's no genitalia. And th- she said that it had like webbing, like when it, when it lifted its arms up and it kind of moved a little bit at the last second, it looked like webbing on, on it, like coming in between its, uh, where it's, uh, the arm it? and the body, the arm and the, la- I guess the, the lats. lats. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so that, that, yeah, she, that's what she said. It was like in between the arm and the chest, which would be the lats. And she said that it was like weird. It was just a weird looking creature. No teeth though. She didn't notice anything like that, but, but she definitely believed she hit it. And how do you explain the jelly like substance on her uh, vehicle? Was um, it a wing? She, was she talking about a wing? Well, not like wings a, necessarily, but was like, it more like a fleshy connection, like a, like you would see like in um, ducks with like web toes, yeah, or like and stuff. a webbing, or like a flying squirrel, kind of like a membranous yeah. type yeah. thing. Well, I asked her like like you know to elaborate a little bit on what she was talking about the webbing. She didn't describe it as wings. She just described it as a webbing, looking like like a thin membrane, like a bat connecting. Kind of, oh, I didn't ask. I mean, not like a wing, like bat, a bat, but no. like that skin looking texture. I, I don't know. I didn't ask that. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah, of. I mean. I, maybe I should have. Was it like a bat? No, I don't know. <laughs> um, no, but I mean, I didn't ask that question. But here's another one. There's another one. I got a bunch of these uh, crawler stories. Now, this one came out of, uh, let's see, the LBL of all places. And I got two of them from there. One of them is, is a really short, uh, brief encounter. And, and it's just these, there were a couple of guys are out there hiking. And um, they were hacking their way through some brush and these guys were from Tennessee. They were from uh, northwestern Tennessee, and they were in the south end of the LBL. Both of these took place in the south end, and actually not too far from where we were when we did the last conference, which was in Paris, Tennessee. This wasn't too far from there. And they were out in the woods, <clears throat> and I met one of these guys at the conference, actually, who had said, hey, my buddy's got a story to tell, whatever. And he goes, he can tell it better than me. Because he got a better look at it, and they were using night vision goggles, and he sees something move on one of the trees, and and he, the guy that first told me the story, he said he couldn't see it, but the guy that get that that his friend Chad, the one that that I talked to, he actually saw the creature and didn't have a gun on him, but because they were just camping and they were hiking, and then they decided that something spooked them, which, believe it or not. <laughs> What a shock, the LBL. Something growled really loud near their encampment, and they decided to book out of there and get back to their vehicle. They, they don't believe that the growl was connected to this creature, and you can believe that's pretty messed up. So something growled, Bigfoot, Dogman, and they got scared, and they end up running into this thing. 
Well, he said that his friend goes, dude, there's something on that tree. And he said, this is after they've been walking for a good 20, 30 minutes. And he said, what do you, what do you mean? He goes, take a look. And he said, but by the time he handed me the goggles, all I saw was a side profile of something that had, was just completely flat. And he said, he goes, it was flat. And when I took the, the, the glass of the goggles off, I couldn't get a good look. I could barely make out what it was. He said, because there was so much canopy that the, the, the moon didn't even shine good. And he said, dude, his friend said, let's get out of here. And so they took off. They got to one of the trails and then they got back to the vehicle and they were gone. His friend said that when he was looking at it, he saw what looked like the back of a head. And we've heard this before where it kind of turned to the side and he saw a side profile. Here's the weird thing that separates it from some of the other accounts. This thing had a nose and he said that what was what it looked like it had a pointy long, elongated goblin like nose coming off of the face where you hear some of these encounters where there's no nose and he saw what looked like uh, very pronounced eyes and a structure on the face the mouth was clear i'm i'm going to say this if this creature is the same thing as the story i'm about to tell or or these other creatures that we saw what if it's wearing some sort of suit? I was going to say everything about like the creature makes me think of an underground being and even the jelly-like fleshy uh, skin-like thing around it makes me think of that too. Because if you had to crawl in real tight spots and you had to worry about sharp rocks, you would want something. Excreting some sort of jelly. Yeah, like, you know, and you'd also want like long <sighs> extending limbs that you can really squeeze in. Lube. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Basically, just squeezing into stuff and not worry about like puncturing your skin and worrying about like scratching yourself up. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to tell you another story, and this one's from the LBL. And this one, this one comes from a, a husband and wife and their children, Carla. I can't remember the other guy's name, Carla, and I can't remember the other guy's name. So we just edit that. <laughs> Anyways, it comes from Carla, and we'll call him John. Um, they told me a story out of the LBL. They were walking along. This happened in the, in broad daylight. This was in the daylight. And they, and they said it was about 30, 40 minutes till dusk. So th- there was still plenty of lighting. Uh, the weird thing about this story, and I get this, this is reminiscent of the one that we talked about on the show on Friday night after the guests had gotten off about the one in San Diego where it was kind of like stuck out, you know, what they, they saw between two trees, they were positioned about eight foot apart <clears throat> and they were walking down this trail and the trees were off to their left and her daughter, who was not a child, she was like 19. She said, mom, look at, look at that. What is that? It's kind of vibrating. And at first they thought it was an elaborate spider web. And then they thought, no way that's a spider web. But it was like the way that I can describe the way she said it was like a rectangle about four foot uh, wide and, but it was eight foot across. And she said that it, that, on either side, inside, perfectly positioned, were like half circle, half moon of uh, on either side of this uh, rectangle. And she said that this bird flew down, which they, she could only describe as a, as a black bird. She didn't get; she, she couldn't tell me exactly what kind of bird it was. She said that it flew down, and suddenly this thing popped up at the top of it that appeared to be a bulbous type, uh, uh, like appendage, and it grabbed the bird. Like it turned around and next thing you know, they see what is kind of like a face and this weird mouth that just was really large begin to chew the bird and eat it, just like eat it. And then as it as it did, the top two, which turned out to be like appendages themselves, the, the top two pieces of this thing like folded inward and then the two bottom pieces folded inward and it kind of went bloop. This is exactly how she described it. She said it went like bloop onto the ground. And then she and I said, you mean like it just kind of like a gob of goo and then kind of bounced back up? She's like, kind of. She said it was kind of like it bounced and then it, it elongated and turned into a humanoidal figure and then swiveled itself around and was all, it was staring at all of them. And they're sitting there in shock. And this wasn't that long ago. This was like 2018. And she said that, you know, we were like, freaking out. And so we all took off running in the opposite direction. And she said that her son, who was 17 at the time, decided that he was going to try and take a photo and his dad grabbed him 
And right when he when he went to, to to grab the camera, this thing immediately like swung around behind a tree. And when it moved, it almost like it did the that where we hear the, about the cloaking. You know, it looked like uh like it turned into like a quivering jelly. Uh, the way that she described it too, like it was like a jelly uh, quivering. It just kind of went behind a tree like boom, and it was gone. Now, on Paranormal Roundtable, one of the Halloween episodes, we talked about blob jelly-like substances being found on trees, which is intriguing uh, when you hear that this thing was described as being jelly-like in the way it kind of bounced around behind the tree, and it ate this bird. <laughs> um, so if you, if you take that story, and then you take the one from San Diego, and you compare those two, you're sitting here going like, what are you dealing with here? Is this an alien? What is this? Now, these two encounters were both in the south end of the LBL, which is known for Dogman. Now, it's also known as the largest cave system. Right underneath there in Kentucky, Tennessee, right there in the LBL, you got Mammoth Caves, you got that area. Um, I have always stuck to the theory that these things are inner earth, and I'll give you something else. The Dogman are too. I mean, that, that, that's me, and I think Bigfoot is too. I think that's where they're coming from. I, I'm not joking. Now, I've talked about it on the show before, and I'll give you food for thought. There was a book written, um, and, and it's basically Aphrodite spelt backwards, okay? Edadorpa. If you look up the, the book Edadorpa, when I said that, I got the chills. The, the guy that wrote the book, it's not important. Just go look up Edadorpa because we're running out of time. But in the book, he, he calls himself, I am the man. At the, at, 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 toward the middle of the book, he encounters this white reptilian, rep, lizard type being that's like amorphous. It has no real shape. It's just like it, it, it takes the shape of a man. And then it leads him through this underworld of caverns and all this weird stuff. And then they eat these mushrooms and he shows them all these amazing things. Just go check it out. And it's very reminiscent of what these creatures look like. And, you know, and I'm not going to sit here and toot my own horn and say, oh, you know, here at Paranormal Roundtable, we got all the answers. We're smart. We're basically, we're the John Wayne of the paranormal. No, I'm just, I'm not swaggering around saying I got all the answers. But if you do deep enough dives and you are, people are, are, are giving you their stories and you put them together and you pull threads, you start to see connections. That's why it's so important for me to make sure that when we do a show about particular uh, subjects, that we categorize them in the right, you know, in the right files. Because I think that this brings uh, this creature into a certain light. The woman with the uh, jelly-like substance on her vehicle. I go back. I find another file. There's another story where a woman claim uses the word jelly-like, like a jelly mold, the way it jiggled but it was skinny and thin. Then you look at the creature in Edadorpa, the book, you know, and I'm not going to get into a whole dissertation about the book. Go read it. It's crazy. Um, but then you start to go, these are threats. Th this is a connection here. There is a connection here. Um, and, and also I think these things can live in water because we've heard of them. Uh, our friend that we used to talk to up in upstate New York, remember he told us about the one up in, the water. What? What? What is the the what you're you're saying? The added the what was it? Edadorpa. A Aphrodite, which is Aphrodite spelled backwards. Yeah. What is, her story was that she went down. No, no, no he, uh, right. The, the story was like I, so. I'm she a man. goes. She, uh, the the king of hell wants to take her as a, a wife. So he, or he, what, right? He's he's talking about mythology. Oh yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. So it, yeah. He goes, she goes down there and then she doesn't eat anything. And then. No, no, no. That's, that's a different part. Aphrodite was a god of beauty. You're thinking of uh, Hades' wife, which was Persephone or something like that. Persephone. Persephone yeah. Oh, you're, you're sure right. <clears throat> as soon as you mm -hmm. said that. I, hey, you're talking about mythology. Yeah. yeah. So. Well, Aphrodite is part of mythology, right? Aphrodite yeah, yeah. was the goddess of beauty and beauty seduction. And, yeah. and oh, she, but she, yeah. he meets her in the book too. And she talks about herself and what she is. She's like a giant there. Hmm. It's really weird. I mean, if you, if, if you get into the, but the, 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 the creature that was like his guide, very much like a pale crawler, humanoidal rake type creature. And then you get stories of these rakes fighting. Like we did one called the Dogman rake connection where they fight with these dogmen. Um, you see them battling for territory and whatever. I, you know, at one time I thought that this thing would be completely outclassed and mismatched with a Bigfoot or a dogman. I don't know that anymore. Because this thing can morph and do things that 
I don't think any other creature can do and contort in the way that they can contort. And you get all these weird stories. Now I got one and I'm going to leave this one. This one was very interesting. It involves a, a python and it, it involves one of these creatures in Florida. We're out of time. But if you tune in on Friday, just maybe I'll tell that story on the Friday live stream. So you guys can, can check this out and you can let me know what you think. This came from a guy who <clears throat> was a former park ranger who retired in Florida and he has a crazy story to tell. And we'll talk about that one Friday on the show. For now though, you have a lot to ponder. It's food for thought. Tell me what you think in the comments and, and like, and subscribe. Uh, we do a deep dive on, on this show. We try to bring you, you know, the threads that you can pull and, and go and pick through and figure out what you think is correct. And like I said, I don't want to sound like a know-it-all here and say, oh, I think I got all the answers because I don't. But um, there's a lot of people spitting out these stories and, and they're just, they're just you know, regurgitating what they hear, but they're not putting them in, in any sort of real system. And you can't discount that these some of these people who have seen these creatures, um, one in particular, the lady who was driving from Galveston to, 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 to Dallas to visit her sister, she had a weird encounter with what she thinks is a, a sea creature type whatever in Galveston. And she thinks it actually touched her while she was swimming. When she looked down, she saw this thing. Now, I'm not saying it was the same thing, but what if, this is what I'm going to leave you with, you get touched by one of these creatures, you know, it opens up something like a third eye to where you're able to discern or see these things. What if that thing was in the middle of the road and the average person would just drive and wouldn't see it, whereas she did because she had been touched by something, you know. I mean, it's very possible that it opens up some sort of doorway into your mind because in the book at Adorpa, it talks about how his mind was expanded by the, by the use of like, obviously he was eating mushrooms down in that underground uh, realm. And of course the guy claims that the whole story is true. Um, but when you, when you read about, I am the man in, in, in Ed Adorpa, you start to to realize that this creature that he's that he's being led around by, the more the descriptions come to light, it is like a slimy, uh, wet creature that kind of exudes its own sliminess or whatever you want to call it, like substance. And so, you know, it's like, did he encounter this creature because his mind was open enough to encounter it? Um, there's all these things, you know, going on in this story. But anyway, I'll leave you with that, folks. That's it for tonight. Thank you for joining PRT. Be sure and like and subscribe. Remember, we have a conference coming up. Dog sure Man and Cryptids. Tickets. Get your tickets at Eventbrite. And uh, be sure and join us on the Friday night live stream. We drop one every Tuesday. We drop an hour-long uh, roundtable uh, talk like we did tonight. And tune in this coming Friday, and I may drop another one of these stories on you. And it involves a very interesting encounter with a snake. Thank you.